Is anyone here? What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions. Good Friday evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, everybody. My name is Eugene Tay, and you are watching Four Good Looking Hunky Men tonight <laughs> on Friday Night Live. Your date time with us. Uh, to introduce my team, today's a few different faces, but if you have been watching on the fringe, you would know these two very, very well. Right below me in the place where Kim usually is sitting, today we have Bill. Hello. Hello. Bill looking like a 70s hippie with his headband and uh, him and his yeah. beer. What are you drinking today, hippie Bill? I'm drinking uh, Heineken. I'm drinking for the first time. I managed to find $10 in the budget to buy some beer. So <laughs> a, a bump up from your anchor. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. so, ladies and gentlemen, you didn't have anchor in that shop. That was weird. Ah, they got no taste, man. Anchor is pretty. Anchor for what people are laughing about. Anchor, that it being an ape drink. I think anchor tastes good. I like anchor. Dude, it's it's not an it's not an ape drink. It's just a drink to get you hammered. Yeah, I don't don't, don't, yeah. don't ape ape ape. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, you go down you enough, and it has the <laughs> apple content. It is mm. good. But if you go to Thailand, they don't call it anchor. They call it anchor. Oh, they call it. Ancho. Oh, Ancho. Oh. Because there's another brand of uh, beer in Thailand, A N K E R. That's Anchor. Oh. <laughs> so if you say Anchor in Thailand, they'll give you that version. Is it a yeah. better version or is I, it a worse version? I, I don't know. I just I tend to drink Anchor all the time as well. So, Anchor, if you're listening, huh? <laughs> yes, uh, anyway, if you guys are wondering where is Kim, uh, Kim is still very much a part of our Friday Night Live. It's just that last week and this week, he has been working. And uh, Friday night is usually the peak period for, for Kim. He has to run his shows and host, uh, you know, uh, uh, events. So I think he is on stage right now somewhere in, yeah. in Malaysia, uh, earning his keep. Right? <clears throat> uh, so, so yeah, he's still very much a part of uh, uh, um, yep. Friday Night Live and the team. Also... Replacing that spot right there, there. <laughs> <laughs> the empty space. Is Matt Verkang. Hi guys, what's up? You I told well, actually no, I didn't I didn't hint that we're coming on today. But yeah, it is good to be on again. Friday night, first time for Bill. Today yeah. I, I learned night. a couple hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I dig it. It's, it's it's my fault because um you know, without without Kim helping me out with the production and all that, so a lot of things get done last minute. Um, and today in the afternoon, I got all my production notes done, everything settled. Then like, man, I realized I forgot to reply you. Are you up tonight? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, it's let's get good. Bill in too. So yeah, Bill and Matt is good. on here today. Uh, I mean, it's a Friday night after a long week. It's time to drink, hear some ghost stories, chill out. It's yeah. good time. That's what we do, man. No politicking. We don't give a shit about anything else in the world. The Friday night is Hantu night. We want to hear ghost stories. Yeah, let's yes. go. What are you drinking? I am drinking Kirin beer oh. tonight. That's yeah. my other half. Kirin. Yeah. Kirin. Yes. We have Heineken. We love Kirin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, if you guys are wondering where that woman from Zimbabwe is, <laughs> she is right now somewhere in God knows... Uh, Jakarta, <laughs> uh, you know, I, and I think stuck in stuck in a in a jam or something. Uh, yep. So, what? yeah, Jakarta jam legendary, isn't it? When you really? in Jakarta, first thing I think of is not hantu. I think of traffic jam. Hmm. You know, so I, I'd yeah. love to have a look at Sonia's passport. You, you, yeah, must be the most true. battered and stamped thing. Yeah, <laughs> we all like renew passport every like two three years. She <laughs> renews every six months. I mean, yeah. I went on. I, it, it has to be a. Uh, like I went on one trip, I thought that was I was like, oh shit, look at me, Mr. Worldwide. Fucking, <laughs> fucking Sonia's got me covered yeah. by like times four. <laughs> Hashtag where in the world is Sonia Kurana? Uh, make your guess, no prizes there. <laughs> Sometimes we, we get we get we, we we lose we lose count as well the number of places she's gonna go. And of course, the man who has been holding everything together like jam on bread, come on lips. This is the man from down under. What? Come on, lips. <laughs> you mean you can see it from here? 
<laughs> oh, shit. I, I thought I brushed oh. my teeth, bro. Far oh, Kim's out. there already? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> already? He's always been here. <laughs> it's, it's not a game, you call each other, bro. There's a <laughs> right. right there. Bromo. <laughs> 2023. Apex Predator, JDC, Joseph Dakota. How you doing, buddy? I'm writing very well. Thank you so much for not introducing me like a World Right Wrestling Federation wrestler. <laughs> I, I, you know, <laughs> speaking of which, right? I remember once you indirectly called me fat. <laughs> can, can you fucking remember, right? When the first yeah. time you said, "Oh, this guy's coming down. He looks like this wrestler." Well, who, who Steve Austin. Yeah, no, is this Stone Cold Steve Austin or someone else? And then I went to research him. He was a fat fuck. <laughs> oh, well, well, now he's fat. But back then in the prime, Stone Cold yeah. is the rattlesnake. He's like the badass motherfucker. Yeah. Stone Cold uh, wasn't fat. He's not fat. I mean, now nah, nah, he drinks so much beer. Yeah. I mean, I mean it, it doesn't matter that I am as well. But yeah, that's because he's just like a retired <laughs> Stone Cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um. One too many Sapporo beers. That's the problem. My I'm God, how... Sapporo beers. We all, we all, we should get sponsorship from beers, man. I swear. We have Kirin, we have Heineken, we have Sapporo, and we're not getting a cent from any of these damn companies. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Oh my God. I mean, I'm willing to wear like a, like a, like a, like an anchor headband uh, for ad. It's fine. Yo, yes, actually. I, cool. I, I, I want to get sponsored by like a skincare company. Like, I want what? to smell like patchouli lang lang and geranium that's what i want to smell like when i do my supernatural confessions do you think we can get every Friday night. dollar shape club because we have no, beers i want it like, oh, like dude. something yeah. like lush you know like right. like that things that sell bath bombs and you know okay i don't know you guys that you know the soaps that these guys <laughs> make? Have, you, have you have you seen the soaps that some of these like these bespoke companies make it it the, yeah. soap, the soap looks like you can even eat it and it smells so good. And when you wash your body with it, you just, ah, oh, it feels yeah. so nice. You know, okay. you know, I got a perfect yeah. advertisement for you if uh, one of these buff company, like Buff and Body Works, come up to sponsor us. We have, we have, you know, JDC walking in, just right out of the gym, open up the door, boom! Jet, 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 shh, and he goes out there. JDC, Alpha, A what, Apex Predator, for the hot day's work, what you need is to pamper yourself. Shh. And the music changed. He puts a buff ball in the bathtub. <laughs> Bro, comes down in slow moles and he watches himself, that's me. tumble himself down. That's like I, an old I, Spice commercial. I, yeah, I, I, I work in, you know, some of the most horrid places in the world. When I come back, I just want to pamper myself. I, I want to smell like a candy shop. You know what? Next <laughs> next week for the show, you should bring on like your, your 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 just your soap. You just pull out your soap from your shower. Let everybody see what you're using now. <laughs> you you just want me to drop the soap online, yeah. don't you? <laughs> hey Matt, no, you just want me to no. do that online. Yes, you do. do. Yes, you do. <laughs> I got you. I'll drop it. I'll drop <laughs> it. Uh, for me and myself, I'm drinking not beer today. I'm drinking Hendrix. Speaking of oh, really? flowery and nice smell, this one smells really good. Summer mid summer solstice. Ooh, yeah, limited, fancy. Limited. summer limited edition. Yeah. Anyway, I think it's time to say hello to the people on YouTube and Facebook. Boys, would you do the honors, please, and uh, say hello to who, mm. the names that you can read out? Right. I have Carlos Cole here, Maitreya Om, Zihao Po, Carlos Cole again. Carlos Cole is just posting. <laughs> like just every single wonderful Matreya as well. So we've got Desmond, Gillian Fernandez, Ivan Go, Sarah Pei, Hua Shooting Ariel. Is it shooting? Is it like shooting or shooting? Oh, shooting. Shirt. I think it's shooting. Huang it, shooting. Is it Ariel. like shutting? Like S H U T N G. Like oh yeah. You see, I don't know. It's such a multicultural place. <laughs> I don't know which intonation to kind of use. And also tuning in, we have supernatural confessions. No, no, that's us. Um, <laughs> um, Sean Chen. <laughs> uh, I haven't even I haven't even drunk like half the cup yet. Like <laughs> this is gonna go. I wouldn't leave it to one of you guys to go and read the rest out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Take I mean, on. on YouTube, we have so many people that we actually see on Wednesdays as well. We have. The clerk, we have Elaine. Oh, yeah, we have Elaine. I actually want to shout out one person. It's 1617. He says he uses Fiji body wash from Old <laughs> Old Spice, oh. I'm assuming. That's what I use right now, and I, I dig it. It's fucking good. 
who else we have we have kk hing we have a lot of people shah some new names frankie nice to see you again on a friday instead of a wednesday yeah we have a lot of people today but it's gonna be a good show yeah it's gonna be a different kind of show because you know every time we have a different host the dynamics really change um and it's it's we are we are unscripted and this whole thing, you're watching us live, the mistakes we made, the jokes we made, uh, it's all live and unscripted. Sometimes we surprise ourselves and we do we do laugh along with you guys. So I think that's mm -hmm. why it's really special, the Friday Night Live. And for as long as we can, we will keep it running. Uh, mm -hmm. We know you love it. We love it. We don't consider this a job. We, we, we enjoy Friday Night Live. As you can see, we are very committed to running this. So... Uh, if you are keen on supporting us in any way at all, not that you are obliged to because your presence here is really good enough, uh, we do have a link called buymeacoffee.com slash forward slash <laughs> ST Friday Life. <laughs> Thank you. So www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash ST Friday Life. If you guys would like to buy us a coffee to support us, please do so. And if you can't, don't want to you know you've got school fees to pay tomorrow you've got to go and pay off your, your sugar mama whatever you know the fact that you guys are here listening to us as i say this every week is is support enough for us yeah okay. i'm gonna put i'm gonna put the link in the comment sections so. <laughs> i saw the pause it was like <laughs> like is it the switch just turned on like yeah can i just interrupt you guys for a yeah. bit like uh yeah. so there's somebody on facebook here uh called the mr ivan go and it is it and it is his first uh friday night live apparently <laughs> what <laughs> ivan go <Bruh>. yeah. <laughs> no bill bill yeah I, I, a new guy. I mean you should you should yeah. give him a shout out bro like this, ivan. Uh, ivan, <laughs> ivan, ivan's been here so long he's on our show dude he comes on on wednesdays do you not see his name <laughs> All the time, Ivan Go comes says, on on Tuesday. Yeah. Ghost Mortem as well. Ivan yeah, <laughs> attends more live shows than you guys collectively do. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Basically, you got to read the fine print. He goes, "This is the first time I've been here for this show this week." Yeah. Uh, so, so technically, uh, you he's see, right. I never read anything like beyond the first line. It's it's just like yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> you know, you know, Ariel is our we call her the mermaid because she, Ariel, right, Little Mermaid. And I want to bring the attention to my Tria Ohm as well. I was scrolling, scrolling through my Facebook and I saw the word merman. The last time I saw the word merman was on Zoolander. Oh, no, <laughs> I, 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 was, I was afraid where this was going. I'm a merman. <laughs> merman. <laughs> and he got, uh, he has this like so silky, sleeky tight thing and he has a merman costume. So does Bill. What? what? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> what? Why are, you the, what? Why are you bringing the furries into this again, Max? Oh, oh Bill's getting haunted by the furries everywhere. <sighs> oh, everywhere he goes, man. <laughs> everywhere. Anyway, welcome to the show, guys. If you are here for the very first time, please do drop in a comment and say that you're first time here. We want to give you a you know big warm welcome. And I think the community <laughs> itself is very supportive of uh, you know everyone who wants to join in, share ghost stories. Do take part, tell us your stories, be free to comment whatever you want to comment as well. Uh, chat with the other members. If you've got a story to share, supernaturalconfessions.com is the URL that you need to remember. From there, you can contact me on WhatsApp. You can uh, come on the show, uh, you know, have me interview you, or give me your text, give me a voice me, voice text, anything to make life easier for you to just get in touch with us to tell us your story. Today, we have a very special guest who will be joining us at 11 o'clock. His name is Thomas Chung. And he was actually featured as one of our confessor not too long ago in the last few weeks. And I think his video hit like 50K in two weeks. Uh, he was talking about ghost marriage. Mm -hmm. And oh. today's oh, yeah. trending topic that has been buzzing up, heating up our Facebook group is about a man who found an ang pao with lots of money inside. And typical of Supernatural Confessions community, instead of going, wow, you locked out, uh, bro, you got so much money. He's like, bro, you habis lah, you pick up an ang pao with money. Confirm must be the hantu. <laughs> There's a ghost marriage thing. Uh, it's, it's a ghost marriage. So for those of you who do not understand the correlation between finding Ampau and ghost marriages and your 
quite clueless as to what's going on. Stay tuned because 11 o'clock, we will be talking about ghost marriages. Okay. Nice. Yes. So and what happens if you find $50 on the ground, Eugene, as you're walking home from lunch at work? Actually, that's a very good question. I was always brought up by my grandmother and my mom from the Pranakan side of the, the Pantang family where you don't pick up anything on the ground because mm. it is believed that people put a curse on the money, drop it on the ground for you to pick up and the curse passes on to you. What happens if you pick it up mm. and then go to the pub with your mates and buy a round of drinks and food with that? That, that alcohol... Because it's alcohol, right? They use it to rub germs off mm. people's body. When you... <laughs> so does that mean mm. it it just like nullifies the, the curse? Uh, uh, yes. Especially if you, yeah, if you have prawn toast and chips <laughs> and four <laughs> pints. Maybe a shepherd's pie. You, you're doing your mental calculation of what fifty dollars can get you already, isn't it? No, no, just what happened last week. This <laughs> 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 is what happened to me on right? Friday last week. Oh, you picked up oh. money. Yeah, I sh- I I yes, dropped you it did. off in the text. Remember, it was just, it was a fifty dollar note. It was just in the in the pavement. People were walking by. I was like, what "The fuck is fifty bucks there?" So I picked it up. I did the right thing. I ran around the corner to see if anyone maybe dropped it, and I and I had it ready in my hand. So you see, I wasn't worried about the ghost. I was worried about like COVID and monkeypox. So I, <laughs> I, I I isolated it in one hand and make sure when I went back to the office, I like washed it with soap. So there you go. That's that's another cleansing, and then. Because my, then someone, you know, I told Kim, and obviously what Kim goes, oh my God, bro, you're now married to someone. I go, bro, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not involved in a ghost marriage. I do not give my consent. Consent is very important, people. I did not give my consent. So Amen. I took it. I took it. And um, yeah, I went to, I went to donate it to someone. Mm. The donation just happened to be the pub. <laughs> yes, I'm at work because no, no, they hear me out, right? Because look at that, like I can give it to someone on the street, right? Um, yes, that's correct, but you know, I, I'm unsure of what he's going to use that, that money for, right? And, mm. and sometimes, you know, there's, there's a lot of other issues. That, so I decided to give it to a legit business who was employing people who needed exactly. a job in order to support mm. themselves, exactly. And, and it was just an exchange. You got to support local businesses, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's correct. Keep them alive. Support, support local. Yeah. I like what M Fires has said on YouTube comment section. I'm going to go with this one. This will now be the new rumor that we're going to spread. <clears throat> JDC has a second wife now. Well, no, no that's not happening. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, I live, live with a black woman. She's not going to take it well hearing <laughs> I've got a second wife. All right. If you, can't, if you guys don't want me to turn up next week, you can spread the rumor. Right? Only next so week, yes, me forever. <laughs> Baby, <laughs> why did I feel about you having a second wife? Because <laughs> yeah. um, I also picked up a uh, couple weeks ago, actually, like about mm. like two and a half weeks ago, I picked up a fifty dollar note in front of a empty parking lot. Dude, My that's man. probably why this shit's been happening in your house. Holy moly, that's correct. Ah, now we know. That's why I like your house haunted. Bill, pick up yeah. one of Cannot I mean, be la. Okay, I don't know if anybody who was here last week knows, but after our show, I think it was um, two weeks ago on, on the Fringe on Wednesday night, Like we were just debriefing and talking about stuff that we want to do for the show. And then shit just started happening. Like I, I legit heard a bell on Bill's end. It was right next to the mic. He couldn't hear a single thing. And then immediately after that, my computer, the volume just started going up and down. I wasn't touching anything. Yeah. And then the next day, mm. some shit was dropping out in, in Bill's bathroom. Some yeah. crazy shit. Like, uh, you know? Dropping out in Bill's bathroom? That sounds about Yeah, uh, not, not from his well, anus, normal, but like from the wall. But like, <laughs> like, a, like a whole shelf uh, came down in mm. the bathroom while I wasn't in, inside it. Mm. And you're married um, to the bride of Slanesh, that's who you're married to, right? Dude, now, and it's Bill. fine because you know you're single, right? So you know, you, got, you now you've got a hey, wife. I mean, like, if, if a ghost uh, sugar mama is like you know married to me and is gonna give me cash periodically, <laughs> like, I'm good. Hey, you know, if, if you guys have watched the confession from Thomas Chung and talking about ghost bride, it's actually not that bad having a ghost bride. Yeah, I mean, all things considered, it's a good deal. Dude, you don't really? have to do you don't have to do laundry. You don't have to keep your house clean. Ain't gonna nag you if you, you know, get like yeah. you don't wash your dishes. 
No, yeah. headaches, yeah. It's, it's no, no, free. no, no, you know, she was, she I mean, if, if my night. ghost wife just gets rid of the dishes by throwing them out the window, that's fine as well. Oh, see, <laughs> yeah, cool. dude, if it, if it like breaks, you don't have to clean it. Uh, yeah. If my wife ever watches this, I love you. Uh, you don't like me. <laughs> just, just, <laughs> uh, just break yeah. your favorite mug. It's yeah. like, whoops. <laughs> <laughs> so Shit. today's theme is going to be about ghosts in the house. So home is where the hantu is, is what I, I term today's show. Nice. I'm going to share with you some ghost stories, uh, confessions from, uh, you know, narrated confessions, and also stories that I've heard uh, from people telling me what happened in their house. In fact, it seems this seventh month has been very active for, for a lot of people. Oh, what happened? Uh, so one of the stories I've, I've got from uh, this confessor, I went down to his place over at Tago Road, Tago Lane. Uh, Tago Lane. Yeah. I live in Pasiris, by the way. So that's Tago Lane. And he was saying that um, the his father-in-law, um, who he's seen for almost nine years through dating his daughter. So every Friday, they would go to his house and they would have dinner and then they would watch TV and go home. But what's funny about this is this is a very traditional man who you do not speak at dinner table. You keep quiet. Shh. So he keep quiet and he would eat. Then after dinner, it's tradition for the whole family to get away from the dinner table and go to the living room. And he thought, okay, you know, being trying to... Chummy, be chummy up to the father and try to speak to him and he'll go Shh, watch the evening news so after dinner quiet watch evening news quiet by the time it's about 10 o'clock already and then he retired for the night and my, this confessor will go home so for nine years he did the same thing go to the dinner table try to talk Shh, sit down in front of the living room try to watch the, the news and try to make conversation Shh. so Nine years later, they got married and everything, and uh, he he passed away, right? And the first, the, I think the first, you know, during the seven days, the seven days block, and he he was sleep, sitting outside in the living room, and the wife just says, "Hey, uh, why don't you uh, pour a beer for daddy?" You know, that's like she so said, "Why? Why all of a sudden?" He says, "I don't know. I just feel his presence around." So open a beer, put it there. He was watching TV, his big ass projector on the wall, three meters by I don't know how many meters. And he sort of like dozed off for a bit. Then he felt someone staring at him. And he woke up and he like rubbed his eyes and stared in front. He saw a black outline, like a shadow, a solid shadow in front of him. And he said, he rubbed his eyes, he double checked and looked at the black figure. Because if there's a projector, if someone stand in front of the projector, that, ob that object in front would have the image. You will see the image on it. But this one is a black, solid shadow that sort of absorbs light into it. So you don't see anything out of it. And so I asked him what happened. I said, did, 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 he, did he talk to you or did, he, did you talk to the spirit? And I would half expecting him to say, you know, ask questions about the, the father-in-law and the father-in-law will go, shh, you know. Uh, but turns out, you know, he, he just covered himself in a blanket and wish that thing to go away so his experience was the spirit of the father was lingering around for seven days and visiting him <clears throat> each night but he never once made any conversation the other lady that I spoke to uh, in Amokyo Avenue 4 by the way it's a very very scary place Amokyo Avenue 4 the vibe there is is in my opinion very very dirty uh, and when I asked about it that particular block that I was under has two suicide cases. One from the window, kitchen window, one from the corridor. There's a lot of injury and it, it seems that people play black magic and they leave things lying around. Uh, one of the conversations I had with her, she says, in her house, even the ones that she's staying right now, uh, things will tend to go missing. Money will go missing. Um, they can hear children giggle. So they know they didn't bring anything home because they are a staunch Hindu family. But she hypothesized that the neighbors could be playing with Toyo, going around stealing money. So, uh, one of the home, Hantu home story that she talked about, which I felt was rather creepy, was for 20 years, from the age of 7 to 27, she kept feeling that there was this man every night beside her bed, crying. 
and she talked to the mother. The mother said, don't talk rubbish. Lah. Just go and sleep. No such thing as ghost. For 20 years. As it turns out, later on, she discovered her mom actually has the gift of the third eye and the mom can see the ghost. And she felt there was this man crying. So as she grew older, she could, her, her senses tuned up a little bit more and she could sense a lot of things. And she one day she told her mom, I can see a man standing there by my bed or sitting beside my bed calling me to go to him. I'm scared. Oh. The mom said, let me talk to him. The mom did something, right? Uh, she didn't tell me what it was. Apparently, the mom negotiated something on her behalf and he left. So when she checked with the mom, what was that entity? It turns out that that entity, the crying man by the bed, was actually her ex-husband in the previous life. Whoa, right. She died in the previous life and uh, he wanted her. And even in this life, when she reincarnated to this new uh, person, his spirit couldn't let go. His spirit is still pining for her and calling for her. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's two stories back to back that I got just uh, over the last couple of days. What would have happened if she actually like went with the man? Good question. We all believe that uh, she would she would not have, she would not have uh, woken up from her sleep. Yeah, so, we so wouldn't we, have a confession today. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, but the first one actually sounds like a the classic de depiction of a shadow person. Mm, where yeah. you know like if you look at all the literature on on like you know the paranormal encounters especially when it comes to shadow people they're often described as this black mass that is blacker than black blacker mm. than the night itself mm. right so and and often they're not associated with ghosts rather that this thing is an entity by itself not mm. something that has ever had like human birth so mm. not yeah. quite a demon but not 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 a ghost either that in between, mm. right? Mm. Yeah. So I find it a bit suspicious that the guy felt like he needed to basically cover himself in fear <laughs> and basically hope to go away. Mm. Because I, I don't know, like generally speaking, I would assume that like out of all the hauntings you could have, yeah. like a familial haunting is probably like the most, like one of the more benign cases where like mm. you would feel that much like animosity or fear. But he was quite obviously scared yeah well, yeah i mean like i guess anybody who suddenly sees a shadow in the middle of the night in your room is probably like what in the fuck is that <laughs> yeah, yeah but it's i mean kind of like okay I would so too. It, it's kind of like if it was somebody you knew and you had a bond with mm. if you just saw the silhouette and you just saw the shadow you mm. kind of recognize it was them and you feel like a sense of ease right mm. yeah that is true. I mean, didn't think about it that way. I I have a similar experience with my grandfather. Love my grandfather to bits. Seven days, his slippers start moving. Obviously, I didn't see it move in, in, in my eyes, but when we settled the slipper and his clothes on the chair, we, we put his clothes on the chair, like really freaky. Shirt on the chair, pants on the, the, the seat, and then slipper in front of it, beside his, his altar. The morning when we wake up, the slipper would have moved. And Oof. you would think that, yeah, that's my grandfather, right? But still, the idea of the dead coming back is yeah. still spooky. Yeah. Like, if my father, grandfather come up to me in my bed, and like, hi, grandson. Ah! <laughs> 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 yeah. I'm not going to go, hey, hi, grandpa. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? How's, how's the afterlife? Yeah. Are you doing yeah. good? Yeah. I mean, the after R would be the first thing, but then after that, it would be like, oh. Like I mean, oh, I mean, even, I? even in the Bible. It can help me? <laughs> Even in the Bible, the disciples were afraid of Jesus when he suddenly appeared in front of him. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah but that was only at first. I mean, yeah. Yeah, at first. Uh, JDC, do you have a Hantu story about home? Um, not one that I've... Okay, maybe I'm wondering if it's one that I've actually experienced. So I'll give two stories, right? One that's happened to my dad here in Perth. Um, he'd basically woken up at 5 o'clock in the morning to get ready for work because he works as a nurse. And so he's making, you know, the, the he, he likes to actually work and, and do the stuff in the morning in the dark. I don't know, he's just a weird person. Um, so he's in the kitchen preparing his stuff, right? And he kind of, he, he saw movement on the right side of his eye and he turned. And he saw my mother walk from my, near where my um, room area was, hmm. like where the toilets are, and walk past him and go towards 
the bedroom. And no, no, actually, no, it was the other way around. He saw my mom come out of the bedroom, I think, head towards that, that area. And he was going, what, what's she doing there? And my mom is sometimes prone to sleepwalking. So mm. I think he went to try to, you know, see if she, you know, try to wake her up and to ensure that she didn't hit herself. And when he went to where she was, she was not, she was not there. Went back to the bedroom. She's fast asleep. Mm. So they, yeah, this has happened several times before, apparently. Classic. Classic. Yeah. And another one happened, um, same, my mom and dad's house when I was living there. Mm. Um, and I was just brushing my teeth and, you know, admiring myself in the mirror like I like I always do is my <laughs> nightly routine. After my bath bomb. Time. Yeah, exactly. After my bath bomb and my <laughs> and, and, your and, 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 and yeah, and my skin feels <laughs> great and, and your Yankee I'm candles, chili lang lang and geraniums. <laughs> I was I think I was brushing my teeth, right? I I saw a corner out of, out of um, <clears throat> like something moving out of the corner of my eye, and when I turned, have you guys seen? You guys know Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know when they beam someone up, you got that scintillating lights, and it, the lights just kind of like. Just like sparkle and the person disappears. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I saw that light, something very similar to that, just sparkle across the the wall and just disappeared down the corridor. Until today, I don't know if I hallucinated or actually saw that thing or if that was the light because um, there's a window on the left-hand side of that kind of like uh, that wall. And sometimes when cars pass through, the lights can actually come through there. Ah, and so yeah. I don't know. It had a very different quality to any kind of light that I've ever seen there, which mm. is the only reason why, for me, I feel that was a little bit out of the ordinary. I've not seen light there like that before. And I lived there all the way from 1992 to like 2006. Mm. So it's been a long <clears throat> time. I know that house. I know how the house works. Yeah. So no more bath bombs for me after that night. <laughs> Charles Ho said something to you, Joe. Okay, here's, go. Here's a message for you. Thank you, Charles. Says, go ahead. You're gorgeous, Joe. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. I keep <laughs> saying that to myself, and maybe one day I'll believe it because of my low self-esteem. No, no. Uh, I Thank mean, you, Charles. I, I actually <clears throat> saw another comment. I fucking loved it. It was by, I guess, it's Rai. It says JDC needs a Victoria's Secrets membership. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm a lifetime member. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got one more hantu story to tell you later on. This is the one that I personally investigated in Johor Bahru. And I actually talked about this confession last year during Halloween for a very special segment with NLB. But I don't think many of you have heard it. I did not post it on Supernatural Confessions. But if NLB. time permits, I might tell you that later. But for now, let us go to our very first confession for tonight. This one is... Oh, it's called Sight of the Bed, confession by me and narrated by one of my favorite SC narrator, Gina. Take it away. Is it Gina? Same thing. Gina. Gina. Sight of the Bed by May. To start this off, I'd like to say I don't live in a creepy house. It's old, but in a charming sort of way. It doesn't feel, you know, negative or anything when you walk in. It just feels like home. Always just home. So you can imagine my absolute shock when I was lying in bed alone this morning watching something watch me back. It was 4 a.m. this morning and my husband had left our bed to go to the bathroom. Uh, our room is decent sized, uh, but from where the bed sits, you can see one of two windows in the room. The other one's covered by blinds on the TV. So it being 4 a.m. in summer, it was already a bit light to where you could see outlines and certain things. We don't have any pets though. I laid in bed waiting for him to return so he could, you know, cuddle, when I blinked and suddenly saw movement in the dark. A dark mass in the shape of a head had moved over the top of the covers just enough to where I could make out the fact that it was moving. I froze because I, I thought it was my husband. Sometimes when he gets up, he will sit in the chair, put on the headphones and play video games so as not to wake me when he can't go back to sleep. I thought maybe he had just gotten back in and I just didn't hear the door open. And that's why he was sitting in the dark looking at me. So I asked him, why are you sitting on the floor? A few seconds of my heart pounding, no answer. And then I heard the doorknob click. And as soon as my husband walked in, it ducked down and disappeared. I screamed, obviously, because what the fuck? And it had him do, I had him do a thorough search, and, but I didn't find any intruder. I still can't explain it, and I'm scared to go into my bedroom alone. 
After note, I've experienced a lot of stuff, especially as a kid. I've even been told I had an aunt that had passed away in another life that was trying to look out for me, but I have never ever seen what I witnessed this morning. It did not make me feel safe at all. Mm. That one is very similar to what you saw as well, right? JDC, someone who, you know, like what do you call it, uh, doppelganger, body double. Yeah. Uh, this is actually similar to an experience I had when I was around 18. Um, happened here in 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 Perth again. Um, I'd gone to a, a mate's house together with this oh this gorgeous brunette. Oh my god, she's like six foot tall. I think she was a oh model as well. It was like she oh god. Anyway, we entered this. We went. Why? We went with her to this to this house, and I and I don't know. It was a long time ago, man. I was fucking eighteen. I'm like what. I'm <clears throat> 25 I'm now. Yeah, really? um, seven years ago. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah seven years ago, seven years ago. with wives. It's yeah, you know, and, those wives. And okay, the, the, the back the background story to this house that I was with with her and my mate, right, was that someone had hung himself in that house, right? Oof. And in the living room that we were in, he had hung himself on the be- one of the beams that was above that living room. And so me, um, hoping to scare the model, and you know, loving ghost stories, you know what, guys, let's just close the lights. And see what fucking happens and just Idea. talk to the thing it's here right mm. so we switched on the lights and i made sure that i positioned myself near her because if she's going to be scared i i would have been able to comfort her in her time of distress and need and that, that's what <laughs> that's i that's why do. you bring girls to horror movies right same thing <laughs> bro i i look after the people that i'm with and i have okay. I carry okay. kind of guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway so we're down here we're doing the shit that you did you know this is before like ghost hunters and stuff like that right yeah i was like going okay you know is there anyone here like like okay what's happened let's just and everything got really still so we turn off the lights you could still see generally what was around you but it was quite dark okay so i saw her figure to my right right and as i was saying that we just felt the energy of the room change and I saw her move in front of me. You know, when someone moves in front of you it at, at night and it blocks light out, she did that. And I thought she was going to come and, and like onto me and like, like hit me accidentally because she was moving. I reached out and grabbed her just, just saying, hey, just, just stop, right? No, I didn't go to your hands like that. I didn't go to <laughs> yeah, your That's hands. how your hands went. I, I, got, I, got, I, I, I reached out, right? Yeah, yeah like so that. My, One hand. My hand. My hand went through the fucking thing oh. and there was nothing in front of me. I just, everyone turned the lights on. My mate down there, he was, was next to the light, switched it on. She was still where she is. There was freaking nothing in front of me. Fuck. Now is that you can see the shadow. Like I can still see it was, a, it was movement. Like it blocked out part of the front that I could actually see the light. I thought it was her. I didn't think it was a girl. And I was like, she's going to accidentally come, you know, hit me or trip over the table. Mm. I reached out to try to get her saying, you know, Michelle, stop. Just click the light on. No one there. Nothing. She was still down there. I stopped straight away. It Whoa. reminded me of the story. You know, funny we talked about doppelgangers. I actually had something really similar to this too. I don't know if I spoke <laughs> about it before. Um, this was back, actually, funny enough, this was when I was living in Amokyo. And... Um, So I was like, this was in the middle of the day. I woke up from a nap or so I thought I woke up from a nap. Mm. I I walk out of my room. I see my sister and she just came home. I was like, oh, shit. Okay, hi. I went to go to the bathroom. I think I went back to my room. And in my head, I was like, wait, what the fuck just happened? Did did that really happen? And then I went, I feel, I think I went back to sleep and I woke up and I asked my mom. I was like, yo, is like, is my sister home? Is she, is she back? She's like, no, she, she's not back yet. I was like, whoa, what the mm. fuck was just happening? And this was like, I could clearly see her opening the door coming in. I was mm. Like, mm. What the fuck is going on? But I think what, what got me from that story is if I ever woke up in the middle of the night, and this is the reason why I don't have a fucking chair in my room, mm. is because <laughs> if I see something sitting there on a goddamn chair and I wake up, I'm going to flip shit. Yeah. yeah. That's why you always put stuff on it, so you know nothing's sitting there. Oh yeah. no, my but room, my room has no chair. No chair. Whatsoever. You go and fuck it. Let's just remove. Just the yeah, yeah. The chair. I mean, there's two things. It's either you see one on, like now that my room doesn't have a chair. The second most scary part is I see it at the dresser, the dresser at my foot of the bed, 
That's freaky oh, too, man. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Dresses. That's where the ghost would always sit there combing her yeah, hair. Yeah, right? yeah. Oh shit, no. And you shouldn't like, like the a superstition. Bike lock on the dresser. Oh, so yeah. what do you yeah. say? Dude? You can put a bike lock on the dresser. That's all that. <laughs> What a bike! A, what a bike lock! A, a bike lock. lock. It so doesn't help if she's sitting on top of it, dude. <laughs> oh, she's sitting on top of it. Oh, just get yeah, one of those, be, like, you know. Dude, that'd be freaky as fuck. Like, yeah, like the, the front like, of one of those spikes for like pigeons, and it'll be fine. <laughs> okay, okay, Bill. If we ever go go something, I'm not bringing you along because your ideas suck. Like, it's like okay, there's there's a freaking demon here, and Bill's like. Just put fence stuff on top of the of, of the dresser <laughs> and, and just up, smear some jelly onto it and then go to sleep and fall. It's gonna no, be okay, Bill's, don't worry. Those the kind like, dying. oh no, there's a demon there. I'm just gonna close my eyes. I can't see it. I ain't scared, it's not there. <laughs> just put yeah. some yeah. marbles on the floor, the demon will slip and fall, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah like should we do it's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, but yeah. dude, I, I can't imagine because at the front at the, at the foot of my bed, I have this dresser that's just about waist height. And it's just like the same level as my bed. And I just thought about it just now. It freaked me the fuck out. But what if I woke up like tonight or like another day and I see someone sitting at the end of it, fucking back facing me, combing my hair? Holy fucking shit. I don't see, wanna... now that you're talking Are they combing their hair or are they combing your hair? Yeah, your hair. If it's combing my hair, dude, that's freaky too. Be like, excuse me, what the fuck? Excuse me, that is a service. That is a public service. <laughs> like, ma'am, ma'am, you need to, pay to touch me. Like, oh, ma'am, you need to comb a little bit harder, especially around the, you know, around the <laughs> We should bring Bill for paranormal investigation and put no, him in a room. We should, we and shouldn't. then, you know, like the ghost will come up to him and he's like, the ghost will be touching him like, uh, yeah, you know, you could like, this is this is a service. It's not a haunting. It's a service. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Imagine going massage. to someone's house. It's like, like guys, Over I need here. some help here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm having these this paranormal events, like, you know, the dishes are moving in the sink and Bill says, it's not a haunting. It's a service. It's a service. <laughs> the ghost Bill, is doing you go, a favor, man. Yeah. Go sit in the car, Bill. Just go sit. In the car. <laughs> hey, I mean, no dirty dishes. What do you want? What more could you want? Uh, so, Bill, you we've guys. talked about this before. <laughs> so, okay, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, there are a few ways to react when you see a hantu. You can obviously get scared. You can try to talk, you know, try to shout at it or try to, you know, Try to scare it away, or you could go the Bill's way. Think of it as a service. And that's why, like, okay, Bill. Bill always says this because Bill's uh, Bill's a virgin when it comes to like paranormal stuff. Nothing really yeah. has happened to him yet, but yet. one day we're gonna bring him on, bring him for like a ghost hunt or something. I'm gonna wait for that day, Bill, and then we're gonna have a sit down and be like, "Oh yeah, no, it's not a service anymore. Actually, it's good. <laughs> I, I'm gonna shit my pants." <laughs> shit the pants would be Kim's territory. That's that's Kim. Yeah, <laughs> that's guess Kim stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh okay. lord. Well, let us get to the next uh, confession. I think then we might have time for one more, uh, where I'll share with you the JB story. That one take Ooh. a little bit of time. So again, if we have time, I'll tell you. Otherwise, we'll bring on Know Your Hunt too, and Thomas will be coming very shortly. I think he's waiting by the side right now. But for our next confession, this one is called The Shadow Man by Anonymous, narrated by Saleh. Take it away. The Shadow Man by Anonymous. When I was younger, anywhere between the age of six or seven years old, my family and I slept together in our master bedroom. My parents in the middle and my brother and I on either sides. This was also the period where I encountered the shadow man. Every night, I would wake up at an unknown time to this shadow man walking from one end of the room to the other. He wore a top hat and a trench coat. For everyone that knew Russell Lee, you'll know that what I'm talking about. He would do this repeatedly and eventually I would fall asleep. I was not scared but rather confused. This encounter would eventually stop and I've wondered why I wasn't seeing him anymore. I never brought this up to my parents or anyone until recently. When I told my parents about this, they brushed it off and said it could have been my eyes playing tricks on me. But what my brother said next shocked me. My brother saw the shadow man doing the exact same thing 
which is walking across the room repeatedly. We have never had any other encounters ever since then. Shadow men are very interesting because I've actually wanted to talk about them on the, the fringe. fringe. <laughs> but Go for it. They're a bit more supernatural than, mm. than cryptids. So some mm. people think they're um, they're uh, a bit of like the extra dimensional entity. Uh, but some people believe they're actually more demonic than anything else. Mm. Uh, just because the sense that people feel when they encounter them is that there's something wrong. Like, it's like the sense of dread. Yeah, not just dread, but there's something like existentially wrong. Like this thing is not meant to be there. It's not meant to be like, it's not natural, mm. that kind of thing. So I, I get the feeling that um, with ghosts, it's more of a sense of fear. But this thing is more so of a, a sense of like, this is not meant to kind of like exist, that kind of thing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I think I think uh, JDC kind of said something along the lines earlier that maybe shadow men aren't really like you know, for example, like a spirit or a ghost. Mm. It was a human who sort of died, mm. and then it was just stuck there, right? But maybe yeah. for like shadow men, it's the same thing with angels. If you're interested in like bibliology and like you know the history of angels, what they believe is that there are entities in the world where they're not actually ever meant to be on earth or they're never meant mm. to be in the human realm but somehow mm. they make their way down and they just have this whole other being or sense to them that there's just some superpower to them that you just can't really know what's going on and i think that's probably how it is you know i think that's super creepy and i'm and i'm wondering if this is actually um like a shadow person like what we talked about in the first confession and maybe it's not that. Maybe it's a ghost that was seen in the dark. Like, you know, if you see me in the dark, I may appear like a shadow, but mm -hmm. I'm not necessarily a shadow ghost or shadow person. That basically what they saw was a, a shadow, a, sh a, a, a ghost in the dark as opposed yeah. to a shadow person. But I did notice, and I was wondering where Eugene was going with this in the show, because he, he described it as the shadow man. Not the shadow man is it you know I, I thought there was going to be like a jamaican um you know thing to it you know just like the a few confessions back the night club bomba shelter yeah, dude. i thought it was going to yeah. be the same thing the shadow man i feel like i feel like every time i'm on the show eugene goes full jamaican man he goes yeah. guy. I'm the the shadow man. man we're looking at the shadow man in the house no but but you know i'm wondering again like so Again, I this is not something that I would necessarily believe in, but it's, it's certainly reported quite a bit when things start following like a determined path. Mm, like, you know, yeah. every night this, this entity is caught taking a shit in the toilet, coming out and walking <laughs> into the kitchen to make a sandwich, right? And this is seen every single day. That is something like what we called, <laughs> this, this is what we call a residual haunting. Where can you imagine that? What? Can you imagine that? You just one day you go like you open the bathroom door, you just see a ghost shit, and you're like, huh, what the fuck yeah. do I do now? Yeah. You just say, excuse and me, you close the door, bro. You, you like piss between his legs, or like, what if you're really <laughs> urgent? Like, you're like, I'm yeah. sorry, I need to pee really bad. Yeah. You just pee through him. What do you do? You pee but on this him. Is something, yeah. You can't Maybe pee on this him because probably going to phase through. So, yeah. Maybe this is something for on the fringe, right? Because let's flip it. And, you know, maybe this would be the multiverse of SC, you know, kind of combining, right? Yeah. Perhaps he's, you're not seeing a ghost, but perhaps he's seeing a ghost. So a few yeah, times yeah, down yeah, in the yeah. past, in the future, this guy's taking a dump and then the door opens and his ball guy comes in like this. <laughs> right? And he's like, whoa. Right? And he slams the door. And then and the then shit comes out faster, that, man. Yeah. We see a ghost. And we open the door, it's like, holy crap, someone's taking a shit, and you shut the door. But it's just like like sliding doors kind of thing. So it's like in, yeah. a, in an yeah. alternate reality, there's like a supernatural confessions in that world where someone goes confess, like, you know, I was taking a shit, guys, and I, you know, suddenly the door just open and a bald man come in and go, whoa. Yeah. And just, yeah. The door slams closed, and I don't know what's going on. It must be 100%. Like and yeah. in, the, in the alternate universe, we're, instead of all guys here, it's actually all of us are actually females. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're all talking a Jamaican accent. It must yes. be the hand too. <laughs> <laughs> I be shitting in them toilet, the door open, and the man come in and I screamed. <laughs> it was the horrible Jamaican accent. So I apologize to anyone from Jamaica. <laughs> Don't do any hoodoo on me. Well, I was just like, making a joke. <laughs> just, just, any echoes. just chill. Just chill, so, guys. Ghost echoes, I find are really, really interesting because mm. they they tend to be things that are quite traumatic. So the fact that this entity was kind of like just standing there and looking and not doing anything Mm -hmm. says a lot about like maybe like something happened there yeah i mean i mean like residual like i mean if you look at a lot of uh ghost hunters and stuff they always say areas where there are a lot of residual hauntings where just things just keep happening nothing the ghost doesn't really notice you but it's always there yeah. Usually, it's a place where something really traumatic happened. So even yeah. if you go to, um, I, f- oh, I forgot, somewhere in Pennsylvania, Gettysburg. If you go to Gettysburg, dude, I mean, till to, to, till this day, people say yeah. they see soldiers walking around. Mm-hmm. And that's that's a place where the, the ground was soaked in blood and thousands yeah, of people have died. So, you know, there's always that sense of energy that... I mean, we I think we kind of spoke about this during the to- our time travel episode where... Maybe they're not dead per se, but because they're sort of trapped in this loop that we see them now, but they're living the life that they did at that point in time. And everything that goes on is just sort of glitch in the matrix in a way that mm. you just don't know what's going on. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, also report- the, sorry, keep going. EJ. So, that's the weird thing about like um, a lot of like the. So, some of the Shadow Man like theories, right? Like, Mm -hmm. they can be kind of explained by like ghosts in the dark and, you know, maybe like, you know, um, uh, some sort of like echo ghost kind of like doing their thing and Mm -hmm. not really feeling any harm because this person didn't feel Mm -hmm. that kind of like existential sense of dread Mm -hmm. that it comes with Shadow Man. Like, because there are lots of accounts where people have just like seen Shadow Man like at the corner of their eyes and they've instantly locked up and like just froze. Because it's the sense you get from from it's like you're in the headlights kind of thing. Yeah, you're in the headlights thing, but for a human that is like yeah. very, very like that is a very rare instance where that happens. I wanna ask you guys this for the on the fringe folks, right? Mm-hmm. There's a lady from New Orleans who contacted me. I remember I mentioned this to you before, JDC. Remember this lady mm-hmm. who called yep. collect? She was not even on data yep. call, she called collect and oh shit. She talked about uh, a shadow creature. She heard our podcast and she said i didn't believe in or know about any of this because i grew up in a very staunch christian family but when i heard the shadow people and the description and i realized that there's been this creature or entity in my entire life and this shadow creature the shadow man he comes with a hat it's almost like x Mm. the spoken man it he has a hat like brim shape trench coat and a lot of people, when they say they see the Shadow Man, they describe it as the same creature, same yeah. thing. So yeah. I'm thinking, right, I'm just shifting my, my brain gear from Hantu to on the fringe. Could this be part of the alien conspiracy or the... Uh, uh, what's the other one? The, the virtual world conspiracy. Yeah. In this world, we, have, we are being observed by aliens and they come down sometimes to interact with us. And that's why they seem out of place because they're not part of reality or it's it's just a glitch in the matrix. Yeah, mm. I mean, you know, I've heard about this, especially because like what you said, she's from New Orleans, right? Mm. I have two I have two things about this. One, let's go with the fringy one. Mm. I actually think that there are a lot of people who say that they see very similar people. I think I was reading this a couple of years back where people were seeing the same guy in their dreams almost every night. Mm. And that's super weird. Like if, and this is like hundreds of people seeing the same guy. And a lot of people were saying that actually this guy was a, he was a dream traveler. Mm-hmm. And what that is, it's, it's kind of, you can look at it in the sense of same thing as a time traveler or inter, interdimensional traveler. But these, I think these people or these things are real because there's no explanation on why you see the exact same guy mm. exact same face over hundreds of people when you've never seen this guy before right yep. and then on the other end 
especially because it's New Orleans, that's a that's a culture deep in voodoo and hoodoo, yeah. all sorts of stuff. And I think it's I've actually heard of this story before about this black magic guy who wears like a, a hat. And apparently a lot of people in New Orleans have sort of dealt with it or, or seen him. And I think it could be maybe someone who was just so deep in it that he kind of trapped himself in that world. Is it Papa Shango? Just, this is his name, it's Papa something. Yeah, like I've heard of I've heard of I I've heard of this too. And I think it's just maybe he's gotten so deep that you know you sort of trap yourself in that realm and you just can't go anywhere, you can't die, you can't really live, but that's become everything you are. So you observe, mm -hmm. you just go through time and you observe things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But maybe I mean, it's not just, a hat. Yeah. Maybe what it's not a hat. So that's maybe it's a helmet. Thing. Yeah, that's because my uncle has actually talked something very similar, right? So my uncle was born like in you know in Pranakan kind of culture, right? The, the, the yeah. veil. So he's able to to see things from very young. This is my mom's brother. He's being able to see see things. You know, you he'll be he'll be the type where you're walking and he says, Hey, don't don't tell him there, walk around. This is why this is, uh, don't then, then later on he'll say, Oh, when you walk there, there was someone sitting down there. Just just walk around. Don't 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 he, mm. that's how he sees stuff, right? Yeah, when yeah. he was in Perth, he reckoned in the in the shops opposite where I used to live with mom and dad, there were a whole bunch of entities, like like a like a large amount of them just walking around aimlessly. And he mm. said and he sees these kind of entities, right? Especially the ones that are in shadow, they have a flared kind of head right. okay huh? so so they, they had in the head area it almost looks like sometimes they have a collar or like like a like okay you know like in um ah what's that show jurassic yeah. park mm -hmm. you have the dinosaur where it, it's a little dinosaur but yeah like that yeah because it's like that where they oh. have flares around them and they have different shapes to it i'm wondering if what people are actually seeing are a group of entities that are perhaps like defined the, by what the lizard like people yeah maybe lizard people who knows that's a fringy oh, thing that's yeah. a fringy thing so my interesting thing is that there have been sightings of shadow people with like various other articles of clothing or are very identifiable identifiable features mm -hmm. uh there's been a shadow person that's been identified with a cane yeah yeah that like you know have like you know various different like you know types of shoes even like where they're like you know identified as like oh okay that is something special um and the key thing to understand is that like when a shadow person it, it, like like a shadow person is always described like as like a silhouette uh, a completely dark silhouette and you can make out specific definitions of things Mm. That tells me that it has an inherently like human like quality that that shouldn't be there. Like it, I, I, it's trying to mimic people. And my on the fringe uh, theory is that mm. it is um, definitely not a human thing. It is something uh, much more extra dimensional that is mm -hmm. simply trying to observe and see and move unseen yeah but it, right. it goes back to the whole thing of like you know all oh, like we are third dimensional beings and like you know when There's we see fourth dimension stuff yeah the fourth dimension stuff where like we, we perceive them it it's not the full thing it's not yeah the, we perceive like, them the, like how we can perceive another human but it's not necessarily what they are like there's yeah. more to them we just can't really Christ, they just flew all over my head yeah. <laughs> That's very fringe stuff. Uh, yeah. Maitreya says, uh, Papa Legba. Uh, he's a gay yeah, Papa the Legba is really and wears really a yeah, okay. You guys know anything about that? I mean, I've heard of him, and, and, and uh, like I think that's what I kind of said with, with New Orleans. There are actually so many really famous voodoo okay. practitioners. I'm going to read out the wiki, wiki stuff. So it's not, my, it's not me sounding intelligent, it's all from Wikipedia. Papa <laughs> Legba is a Iwa in Haitian voodoo who serves as the intermediary between the Iwa and humanity. He stands at a spiritual crossroads and gives or denies permission to speak with the spirit of the Guinea and is believed to speak all human languages. In Haiti, he is the great elocutioner. Legba facilitates communication, speech, and understanding. He is commonly associated with dogs, and Papa Legba is invoked at the beginning of every ceremony. Papa Legba has his origins in the historic West African kingdom of Dahomey, 
located within present-day Benin. He, okay, this is important, appearance. He usually appears as an old man on a crutch or with a cane. Someone said the cane just now, right? Yep. Uh, wearing a broad brim straw hat and smoking a pipe and drinking a dark mm. rum. So, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't Ewa the sacred tree from Avatar? Maybe that's where Avatar got, got the thing from. Mm. So, yeah, Let's Ewa, see. pronounced as Ewa, also known as, spelled as Iowa, I-O-A, our spirits are in the African religion. Yeah, so it's like a the, the, the tree of life thing. It's like a serpent. Speaking you of know. speaking of Hantu and all this Haitian culture, up next we do have um, a Know Your Hantu, very interesting one, uh, from Mexico. But before that, I think somebody wanted to say something, right? That no, I, I was going to say, like... Uh... I'm actually planning a trip next year. I don't know why. I mean, after we just came back from the U.S., my <laughs> wife actually said that we wanted to go, to, that we should go to New Orleans next year. So when I'm there, you know for sure I'm gonna go. Like, okay, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go do some black magic, right? But I think it'd be really interesting to go and study and like look at it. I think. You or you try can. To what is more in a pipe? Yeah, you can go yeah, to black yeah. magic for the show smoke. purposes for research. Yeah. You know, <laughs> take one for the team. No, right? dude, we have a guinea pig. It's Bill. He's been looking oh, for a Bomo great. for like the yeah. longest time. Yeah. Somebody so you want to bring you to New Orleans and then you guys cover it there. Then we do a live. No, dude, we can get one here. It's different. It's cheaper. Somebody, okay, if one of you are watching now, if you can find a Bomo for Bill, please, please let us know we're looking. <laughs> Hashtag Bomo for Bill. Bomo, Bomo for Bill. Bill. Bomo for Bill. Yes, there Bomo. we go. And, and it's B O M O H for Bill. Yes. It can be F O I. I have to show you, please. <laughs> Up next, we have uh, Know Your Hantu. This is La Mano Peluda. Uh, La Mano Peluda. Uh, okay. How do you say it in Spanish? <laughs> La, Mano La Mano de Puda. Uh, La Mano de Puda. Arriba, take it away, Elvin. <laughs> this week, Know Your Hantu, we're going to talk about La Mano Peluda of Mexico. Some stories might have mentioned this entity a little different from the one in Mexico. 1908, in Puebla, lives a man named Señor Villa, also known as Horta, who owns a pawn shop. Horta was a short, big-bellied and hairy man. On all accounts, he is a pretty terrible person, rip off his customer, a show-off and never once did a good deed. He is so terrible that every time someone walks in front of his shop, they will say, Que Dios te seque le mano, translated to, Please God, dry out his hand. Many years later, Horta died of old age and God indeed dried out his hand. Why so? Because gravekeeper of a place where Horta was buried gave a story to local newspapers saying that he would see a black hairy hand sticking out of Hota's grave looking for victims to grab them, choke them and tear out their eyeballs eventually. Once the hand did that, they would return into the grave. After this story was published, many soon claims that they have seen Hota's hand appearing underneath their bed, moving through their fields, appearing in their home and so on, looking for more victims. People would see black, hairy hand with very sharp nails, twice the normal size of an adult's hand, and it is just the hand. Wherever it goes, it will leave trails of blood and maggots that kept dropping off it too. Children are told that La Mano Peluda will come for them if they do not sleep early. Not only it will come from under your bed, it will also spring out of windows behind the doors and some tales even mention coming out from the wall. Mm. That reminds me of the thing from Adam's family. That, that's mm. right. Anything mm. with a hand is Adam's family. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Okay, we do have no time today. We do not have time today for me to tell you my JB story. Uh, mm. But uh, please remind me next week to... Oh, no, next week I'm going to India. I might not be able to, to come on come on the show. Carlos Cole Ooh. won't be happy at all. Carlos Cole will not be happy. <laughs> you don't like the two-part <laughs> thing, bro. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Carlos. <laughs> but I'm going to India on Thursday. I land on Friday. I would try to come online if I can, but just in case I can't because I'm in... I'm 
I'm going to be in northern part of India, and the reason I'm there is for supernatural confessions. Um, nice. I am, you know, I love traveling. You know, I love dark tourism, um, and I was invited to come down to India for eight days tour to see the occult practices in northern part of India. Oof. So I'm going to do my recording, my video, uh, and hopefully, if if everything is great, we can actually run a tour. So you guys can see mm. the stuff that you don't get to see on Chan Brothers Travel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. <clears throat> no, no, no shooting Chan Travel, Chan Brothers though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh Elvin, is Thomas on the line? Are we gonna bring him on? Okay, we're calling Thomas Chung now. Can the audience hear the the ring tone? Yep. Yeah. yeah it sounds like the old US robotics modem, remember? Those old days. Thomas, if Hello? you can hear us, give us a sign. Oh, I can hear you. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Can oh, yeah. yes. Elvin, could you put his oh, profile okay, okay. pick up, please? Ah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Thomas, you are right now on air with uh, Supernatural Confessions. With me is Bill, Matt, and JDC. We are hearing you loud and clear live, and so is the audience on YouTube and Facebook on Supernatural Confessions. How are you doing? Uh, good, good. How are you guys doing? Good. Just a bit of us. We keep drinking all night. Kind of, kind of <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I Thomas, so. Uh, I'm looking at you guys. Huh? Congrats on your very successful confession. Uh, I think a lot of people love you. I see from the comment section, uh, you know, that they, 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 they want to go see you. So you also run a uh, uh, amulet wrapping business, right? You want to just give right. us a brief overview of what is that is about? Okay. Uh, actually, it's basically like uh, like when when devotees, they go to temples or they, they go to any dealers to who deals with amulet, usually the amulets are, there's no casing to it. So it's like just a, either make um, from a metal uh, pendant, metal pendant or a powder made pendant. So in order to, to wear it as a necklace in a pendant, so we, I, what I do is I do the plastic casing to encase it so that the devotees can um, wear it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what you do. So if anybody wants to get your amulet wrap, Thomas Chung is the guy to go for. Also, Thomas Chung is the guy who talked about the ghost marriage. And before we start to ask him questions about ghost marriage, Elvin, would you mind playing the clip about uh, this man who found an unpower full of mind, please? <sighs> Uh, yes, the yes, that's the one. Yeah. So, Thomas, you probably have seen this post mm. about a man who found an armful full of money inside, <laughs> just left <laughs> by the corner. What is your first thought? First thought, I need to congrats him. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> my man. That's, that'd be mine too. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, like how we congratulated JDC today for his second wife. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And Bill's first. All right. Alvin, thank you very much for this. Yeah, we can remove that thing. So tell us a bit more about this. Why? I mean, for people who wonder why five ampa on the floor is such a bad thing, uh, you want to tell us a bit more about it? Okay, basically, okay. Um, there is three concepts to finding an ampa, which is uh, can be good, which is the ghost marriage. I mean, yeah, you know, there's pros and cons there. There is two other. Uh, option or point of view where it would be bad, bad. There's no pro, there's just con. Mm -hmm. Yeah, first, the ghost marriage, like, as I've ex explained uh, on my confession, uh, there, the, it, will, it will help you in, you know, in a, a way or two, in a, you know, uh, how to call it? Uh, uh, like in, in a visible hand will help you to push regarding what you do, your business, everything. Yeah, like if you have a ghost uh, right in your business, your life is soon, soon. That's what you told me, right? 
business good, yeah, life yeah, move, like, everything is sweet, sweet. Mm. Like like what the the Hokkien will call uh, a calling of wealth, lah. Like the zhao cai zhao cai type, lah. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but the other two uh, point of view is one. There is a, such a practice of if a person who used to deal with occult, like uh, the Yunnan side, there's a they call the the Yunnan voodoo, which in China I'm not sure about the English, but in Chinese they call the gu. The gu is like a type of uh jing chan chong. Ah, it's a silkworm, but they call it golden silkworm. Oh, but this okay. kind of uh, yeah, it's like a hex or a voodoo. Yeah. You call, maybe right. you can call it that. Uh, so th- when they will usually pass down to the, the the youngest daughter, the tradition will be passed down to the youngest daughter. So in order, if let's say you are sick and tired of it and you don't know how to handle it, what they do is they marry it off. Okay. So in um, yeah, they marry it off in such that there will be a sort of a carcass thing. So they wrap it up, they put inside the ang bao of the insect lah. Then they put inside the ang bao. They put a stack of cash inside. They call marrying off the in the 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 jing chan. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, so whoever picks it up, right? They will have the boundary will be the money lah, the cash inside the thick stack of cash inside mm-hmm. the ang bao lah. Shit. The person who picks it up will so called marry it lah. Then you'll follow it, the new owner. And this is not a this is not a a, a rude or silly question. Where does consent come in all of this? That, Can somebody say I just that, I don't consent? No, cannot. You okay. don't. Okay, if you do not consent to it, if you wish to get rid of it, the Alternative way, best way is to find seek a Taoist master, then he will he or she will do a ritual, and then, mm-hmm. and then do to let it go somewhere, and then wait for the next victim. There's right. no way to kill it. Be, so uh, you means... want to kill it, can I? But that mean you have to you know get the rough up. You'll be on the receiving end of the rough. So so in the situation this happens to you. How like mm-hmm. let's say you didn't know. How do you know that this actually happened? You're like now you're married to a ghost bride and you don't know. Ah, oh, like, if you're like, are there signs? Ghost, you don't know. Asking on yeah, behalf okay. of Will and JDC. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually yeah. asking for them because they have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, if you happen like that case, that guy don't know whether he mm-hmm. really marry a marry a ghost bride or whatever thing he picked up because of the stack of cash. Uh, first thing you have to see whether there is any photo behind as a written date of birth. Okay. Ah. Okay. If okay. there so is. is... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. If there is a photo, high chances are I would say ninety nine point nine percent that yes, it's a ghost. Wow. Ninety nine point nine percent. Hui. Oh so, dang, you guys like, have wives. So, because like ghost brides are seen as like a quite a positive thing, um, uh-huh. do people like <laughs> actively like are there people that actively seek them out? Like, is there a matchmaker? Uh, in in Singapore, I have not heard of it, but in Taiwan, there is actually one guy who I cannot remember exactly how. What's the number of ghost wife that he married? I think around six, six plus. He okay. actively, actually, he, he actively married. went around to search for Ang Pao to pick it up and see whether it got cash. So okay, oh. I, 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 I don't okay. I don't want to sound I don't want to sound like dumb, right? But do ghost mm. brides get jealous? Because I mean, if I were to marry six people, like human people, I don't think that would fly with anybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Of course, they will get jealous uh, in a, uh, in one point of time. But you okay. have to, you know, when, it, it, depending on if ghost bride versus ghost bride, of course, there will be right. jealousy. Right. And who, okay. whoever got the most beef, you know, be the biggest yeah, one yeah, in the yeah. lao ta, you know. Hmm. Uh, but right. if, let's say, a ghost wife versus a human wife, then, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they of course, the ghost wife will automatically be that. Oh, well, automatically right. win, is it? No, automatically, like, uh, you know, they give leeway, you know, only at night, you know, 
Ah, like so you know, what's like, the downside of a ghost bride? Uh, because it seems like all upsides to me. <laughs> my my question actually is 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 coming on the back of what you were saying, Bill. Like you talk about what is the you know what are the upsides of it? Is the upsides of it or the downside of it having to have sex with your ghost wife? Like does the ghost wife want your yang chi because they have yin chi? Um, no, really, actually, no. The ghost yeah. wife will not, as I mentioned in my confession, the ghost wife will not actually drain you of your positive oh, okay. energy. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. um, but of course, um, they will be you know, like if you get too much, uh, you know, too much of ghost wife also no good for you lah because right. they are actually negative energy. But if you want ghost one only one ghost wife, yeah, it won't drain you lah. Same thing lah. I mean, if you got one wife, you are kind of half dead. You got six wife, you are fucked lah. That's the same theory as <laughs> Bro, two wives already like fucked uh. The two wives. Uh. Okay, I got a question for you, uh, Thomas. On behalf of a lot of people who just uh, posed this question, I I know the answer, but I just uh, want to hear it from you. People have said, uh, "Oh, so ah, uh, you put the ampau there, uh, but you are female ghost. What if a woman find it? How then lesbian uh? Or you know, uh, if you are uh, the other uh, way. Yeah. So how I what's your answer to that? Like you told me once that the ampau that is there will only be visible. Uh -huh. To the ones that the ghost bride pick. So if it's a female ghost looking for a husband and you are uh, a woman, uh, you walk past, you uh, won't find the angpao, right? No, you will not find. There's no no such cases where um, the angpao is supposed to be meant for a male. The female can pick it up. No. Uh, so ladies, don't worry. There's not going to be any LGBTQ ghost marriage for you because the ghost will cover your eyes. <laughs> and so, and, and coming back, I, I, and coming I back to. to to Bill's question, what are the what are the what are the cons for it? Okay, what are the cons? Um, okay, the cons actually is you must uh, must give offering every year. That means every ah, yeah. day you must just you know pray just stick to them. Every year you need to burn offerings for them, mm. and then you must educate oh. your offerings, your descendants that this is your your elder mother then you must pray to her also every like uh, you know like once yearly Qingming that where you pray it's only once a year right the day. so it's not a bad one yeah once a year uh, yeah. so you pass forget down, pass, from a different culture like say like okay, an, so? an angmo go and steps steps on the on the on the red packet and he picks it up or someone from africa does it and they don't necessarily ascribe to Taoist, you know, ways of, 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 of spirituality. I mean, like, how, how do they go about it then? How do they even know? Okay. Yeah, exactly. If if so happened that, you know, the, the ghosts have a liking to African guys, you know, and more guys, then do, do bad for them. Uh, they'll be like sticking to the guys wherever they go. Shit. Sarung party goes. <laughs> SPG. Yeah. I like that. Well done. Well done. It, I mean, as much as this is like a pretty lighthearted topic, like it, it does put you off from like, like if I ever see like a red packet on the okay, well, GDC, be careful there. But if you know, if I see like a red packet on the floor, whether it's during Chinese New Year or whatever, that's kind of like even if you were trying to do the right thing, right? Let's say you wanted to pick it up and like bring it to the police or whatever. Does that kind of already include you into this like sort of contract? Uh, if you want to pick it up to the police, the question is, would you be able to see it first? If you are able to see right. it and you able to pick it up, then chances of you pass it to police also no use. But what if you don't pick it up? You see it, but you don't pick it up. You just walk by. Ah, then okay. Then you're safe. Uh... Hmm. But how many of you see Ampa won't pick up one? That's what I mean. That, that's, what, that's, what one. One. that's what freaks me out. That's but what freaks like, me out because if I we can go to to find out if we do have a ghost bride, uh, a ghost bride. Do you want to know if you have a ghost bride or you want a ghost wife? <laughs> Which one do you want? Uh, <laughs> uh, wants, uh, wants uh, know both. Before, depending on the results of the first. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think yeah, it's it's honestly terrifying. Like if you just find it on the street, and how is it terrifying, dude? I mean, I'm not, I don't want to get a ghost wife. What are you talking about? Like no, it's, it's just... not a ghost wife. It's a service. It's a service. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you only got to give an offering once a year. Uh, once a year, that's uh, it. But right? every it's day only... you need to 
need to give joystick lah. Every day you need ah, to give the joystick. Sure, like, give joystick every day. Give offering once a year. But only a few Doesn't dollars. Doesn't that you you know can have sex seven nights a week? Uh, what else? I mean, what? Virtual. I will, I will say virtual. I will not say actual. Virtual I will say sex, virtual. Yeah, you you get you get good business, good health. Everything is great. Yeah, no, Bill, you, no. we gotta we gotta put you in contact with Thomas, man. You gotta go see him. Yeah. Go shake his hand. Get find a, <laughs> go go on Ghost Wife Tinder or whatever that. <laughs> Ghost Wife Tinder. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, because you're so interested on it, Bill, you're gonna get come up from your house. There's gonna be like twenty red packets all on the floor, and you you, you slot. You gotta swipe right or left. Which one you want? Like yeah. Like, let's uh, add I'll, I'll, I'll pick up the the, the, the most well decorated red packet. Okay, so we're, we're finding we're finding Bill a ghost wife. <laughs> so it's Bomo for Bill and ghost wife for Bill now. <laughs> That's right. I love it. I love it. You know, Bill comes to the show one time and he gets all these hashtags <laughs> and all this stuff thrown at him. <laughs> I, I'm very willing to like you know like hey this is an advantage. Okay, this is a service. This is like you know something to get ahead. <laughs> See, it's a service. Okay, uh, wait. So I think we didn't ask Thomas this question. Yeah. So, but what happens uh, if, let's say, like if you don't offer that joystick every day, or you don't like once a year, you don't burn like you know paper money, all this kind of stuff. What actually happens? Oh, um, oh I, don't like all, I, like I don't like that sound. I like that. I don't like it either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. The okay. I will put it in from one to ten. So the rating okay. from the lightest to the heaviest. Lightest is um you will feel sickish. You start to feel a bit okay. sickish. Okay, then um, slowly progressively you start to get unlucky, your business start to go down. Then further proceed up and up and up until you it, it will disturb you, it will not, not let you sleep at night. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just asking, so, uh, asking for a friend, you know, like, Bill, Bill, <laughs> Bill might be for you. Are you sure you're asking for a friend? Yeah. Asking for oh, Bill. No. Yeah. I'm asking for Bill, man. Oh, yeah, thing he is, can't right, sleep like, because so... he's painting too many freaking miniatures. <laughs> so, so that's the thing, right? Like, you know, how do you know if you have a ghost wife or not? Is there a place you can go to to find that out? Number one. Tow- uh, like, towers, you went to the towers, towers yeah. Uh, well, so far I know uh, that I know of still practice it. The uh, areas are uh, uh, in Malaysia will be the Chinese community. Um, okay. In China, there's certain part of the province that's still practicing it. I don't really know where, but in Taiwan, it's it's quite common. Taiwan is the most common. So I need to go to so, Taiwan you know, to find out if I have a ghost wife or not. Yeah, yeah, precisely. You can go Taiwan there to hunt for Angkor if you want to see whether you are you a hot cakes for them. Oh, Oh, Bill, go and sit in the car, Bill. Bill, go and sit in the car right now. (laughs) Bill, I don't like the look in your face. Excuse me, get in the car. It's two birds with one stone, okay? Lock the door. Do not let anyone in, Bill. Oh, Lord. Thomas, do you have any? uh, We have very short time left for you online, like almost just two minutes more. Uh, Do you want to have like a quick update on any ghost stories that you have for us? Uh, Any any cool things that you want to share since the last time I interviewed you? Uh, yeah, there's one that I think maybe missed out. There was that since you guys just now I was uh, hearing you guys saying about uh shadow man. That mm. reminds mm. me um that there is this incident where in the Bangkok hotel, uh I think the Bangkok the hotel has changed name, so I think I can say it out. It's uh called NASA Vegas in Bangkok. <coughs> so what happened is that uh, there is one trip I went there looking for my friend. The first Sorry, night, uh, Thomas, uh, can you off happened... your fan? There's a there's a fan behind you. Can you turn it off? Uh, okay. Wait, uh, give me one. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank so you. what? So what happened is that uh, first night I check in the hotel. Okay, there's a aircon leakage, so call the service and then change the room. So what happened is that the bellboy go to the new room, he never knocked the door. So the first thing that came to my mind is, oh shit. Okay, mm-hmm. then I just like, okay, fuck it, just go in. Once the moment I go in, everything settled down, everything. That night, in I don't know what, in the middle of the night, I don't know what time, I was sleeping, but uh, 
uh, the more I sleep, the more it, uh, like frustration I get. It's like somebody who's looking at you, this kind of feeling. Keep looking at you until like very irritated. To the extent like uh, you wish to wall up the guy. So I'm not sure whether did I really wake up or not. But I my memory served me right is I opened my eyes. I looked up. Because on top of me, there's an icon. The icon is there. So I looked up and then I saw a shadow just in front of the icon floating. Dark shadow. So uh, the... The anger overtook me, so I screamed it out uh, without any vulgarities, of course. I just screamed it out in, in, in Hokkien and I just said, I never disturb you. You don't come and disturb me. Get out! And then very loudly. Uh, I so, sounds cool if you say it in Hokkien. Are you sure? Okay. Then, bebo cha de, then, I cha wa. You see, with this Hokkien, you don't need to swear. It already sounds like you're swearing at him anyway. <laughs> cooler, yeah. right? It's like when you in Hokkien, it sounds cooler. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. So so after that I just like fall back down to sleep. And then for like uh maybe one five seconds later, I, I like suddenly it, 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 it occurs to me that did I wake up? Because when you shout you there's a there's a vibration on your throat, you can feel it. Mm. So for my feeling is that I felt vibration on my throat. But then I wake up, I see surrounding like nothing. Like normal night. Mm. Yeah, I just like, oh, okay, fuck it, let's go sleep. Then I go back and sleep again. Mm. Then the next day, I went to find my friend who is the uh, translator for like, Achan. Okay. Yeah. He also got, uh, is uh, one of the practitioners. Uh. So I, I, I told him this incident. Then he said, uh, oh, uh, actually, the ghost is trying to make friends with you. Uh. I said, <laughs> for what? Mm. I asked him back, <laughs> for what? No, 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 no. Chinese no make friend with ghosts. No, 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 no. Maybe it's a ghost girl trying to get to know you. Uh, no, no, no way, no way. He, somehow he asked me to go and buy the those garland flowers, go and put in the hotel room. I said, Yeah, no, ghost, ghost, for the ghost, uh, the ghost, ghost, ghost girl. No. <laughs> ghost <laughs> ghost <laughs> ghost oh boy. Thank you, Thomas. Uh thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, we hope to have you back. Uh, once again, uh, okay, don't be a stranger. Sure. You know Thomas has been with us for a very long time. Uh, he's Thank on, you, uh, Thomas. Yeah, we'll be uh, in contact for Bill. Yeah. I mean, we'll be we'll reach Asking out for a friend. Yeah, Asking thanks, for Thomas. Asking Asking for sure, friend, sure. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good night, buddy. Okay. Okay. Right. Good night. Good night. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Well, that is Thomas Chung, uh, amulet rapper and all-round funny guy. You have seen him live today. And how he sounds on Confession, how he sounds today is pretty much the same. Um, so, yeah, uh, how are you guys feeling? Uh, with Bill and Matt and, you know, me and mm. Joe. It's like on the yeah. fringe Friday Night Live. It's uh, a yeah. multiverse crossover. The multiverse. <laughs> yeah, I like, like what someone said. Friend. Ask him a friend. Ask him a SC friend. multiverse. Yeah. <laughs> I think now, it's great. Uh, I mean, I always enjoy being on this show. Sorry? Uh, no time No time today, Alvin. Uh, we we'll play for next week. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, we want to have some... Uh, we want to make some announcement uh, since you guys are here. <clears throat> Please do set your calendar free for the second last week of... The second last Friday of October and the last Friday of October. Uh, if you guys would love to spend a little bit of money and travel to Sarawak Kuching, Kim's homeland, we will be running our annual finale because, you know, Supernatural Confessions, our finale is uh, October, the last week of October. We're going to have that live in Sarawak Kuching. Tickets are on sale. We have 20 spots for so Singaporeans to fly over. Hotels, everything is fully settled for you guys. Uh, you go along for a cultural trip to see the mysticism side of Kuching, a haunted walk, SC live show, uh, all the good stuff, meet the fans there. Uh, if you cannot travel over to Kuching and you want to meet all of us uh, on the week before that, I believe that's 21st, right, GDC? What, it the will be, uh, I, I, I just like, yeah, it will be the 21st. The Friday 21st, 21st of October. All the, your Friday Night Live hosts will be here together under one roof 
myself, Kim, Sonia, JDC, Matt, Bill, Jonathan Lim, all in one place. Uh, meet and greet. We'll love to see you guys. That's on the 21st Friday. And on the following week, 28th, we will be in Sarawak. 20 spots tickets on will be on sale very soon. Uh, that's that part of the the, the promo. Uh, I, it's supposed to be out today. Lah. I haven't done a poster yet. So my bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the other one is the walk with Hantu Changi has been such a success and a hit. People have been asking for it. We have two more dates out. This will be on the 24th and the 29th of September. That's a Saturday and a Thursday. So if you missed the first round of Walk with Hantu Changi, it's your time to join us again right now. We have two more slots uh, open Ooh. for you guys. Yeah. And also, I've got news from Ellen, our moderator for SC Discord channel that hey bro hey can you please uh, tell people about our Discord channel uh? <laughs> it's been a bit slow and I apologize because we do have a Discord channel but not many of you know so I already pinned the URL here uh, the funny thing about this Discord URL is it keeps disappearing and I realized that I need to click on it to have it permanent so this is the permanent Discord channel URL go check it out that's where the community meet and it's community run by community uh, Ellen moderates it but it's very much you guys go in shoot the breeze and just get to know each other uh supernatural confessions is a community first kind of uh, place we always take your uh, your feelings your thoughts and your everything about community first uh before myself or before the brand um yeah so if you have ghost story to share supernaturalconfessions.com is the place to be uh, tonight has been wonderful you know and just very quickly before we move on, sorry, um, mm. Eugene. Yeah. Hanje has asked where to meet on 21st. We will be providing location and more information about Correct. that closer to the we, day. We are trying we'll be to in find Singapore. a place. Yeah, we'll be yeah. in Singapore. We're trying to find a place because we want to bring our band Silver Starts, the one who you can hear the Army ah, Speed to, to perform live for us. So we're finding a place that can have live music, lots of alcohol and space for you guys to hang out. Yeah. Yeah, wait, wait, we have the Changi walk, right? It's on the 24th of September, you said? Yeah, 24th and 29th. Can you make it? Do you want to come? Let's yeah. see, Bill. Let's do I, it on the I want to come because I've got a few friends that might be also interested in coming as well. All let's right. go, Bill. Let's do it. We let's go find some Ang Pao. Go okay, find some Ang Pao along the way. Maybe I'll for, be for Bill, all Bill. the Ang Pao's. I'll be like, hey, don't touch. Take That's picture. Don't touch his mind. It's mine. Yeah. mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll on it. This one picture. Then I compare with the others. And then when it comes to October, when there's the real meet and greet, Bill's fucking dead. Like he's just just dying. Yeah. He's like a skeleton of a man. Yeah. <laughs> Bill, Bill comes to like, like this is all like pale. <laughs> hey guys, Bro, I haven't I slept for four sleep. weeks. Like, all they want is just too second many wives. Yeah. Too many wives. Too many wives. Yeah. And it comes hey, in the Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Anyway, watch the rest of us. Jonathan Lim and myself, Tuesday night, goes Mortem. Watch Bill and Matt on, on the Fringe every Wednesday. Give them some love. Uh, Kim, Sonia, uh, JDC will be back very shortly again on Friday Night Live. Uh, the whole team, uh, we're looking forward to October, really. That's the, that's yeah. our finale. And last year, finale was interesting. Let's have not have that again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, any, uh, any last words before we say goodbye? I probably want to say, like, you still have time to buy us a coffee. So go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash SE Friday Live and show your uh, appreciation and support by buying the host of coffee. Thank you, guys. Mm. Any, anyone bought us a coffee today that you want to shout out for? Yep, we do. We have Charles Soul. Thank you so much. Um, that is a very nice, hot, steaming cup of um, tasty mixed with coffee. <laughs> so, yin yang. coffee. Yin yang. Yin yang. Yin Yang, yeah, yeah Yin Yang, I like that, I like that. Mm. Yes. All right, there you are. Uh, um, Joe, yeah. say goodbye. Goodbye. No, no, no. <laughs> thanks. I really enjoyed tonight, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, and thanks to you know Matt and um, Bill for kind of stepping up as well, and Eugene as always. Uh, my name is Joe, and I feel like tonight there have not been a lot of questions more answers but for me there's always more questions than the answers so yeah. thank you guys for spending time with us yeah thank you very much thank you very much for having us uh it's been a blast and i feel like there is uh th th there's more questions than answers i still <laughs> want to know more wait he what right. he almost <laughs> forgot his line well done okay again <laughs> 
Thank you guys for having me on the show again. It's great to see that you guys from On the Fringe and Friday Night welcome us. It's really nice to see. If you do want to see more of us, you can catch us on Wednesdays and On the Fringe and maybe occasionally on Fridays. If uh, if we need manpower, dude, we're here. If you want to see more of that, also let us know. I saw some people saying, what is it? Uh, fringe Confessions. That's what. That's mm, nice. Nice. All right. Ooh. But until, until next time. Fringe. Our supernatural fringe. There you go. But until next time, guys, stay on the fringes. Nice. I want to thank, uh, thank Elvin De Cruz for operating the stream behind the scenes. We have Elvin. Dana, we have Lynn, we have uh, Kara and Ivan who is moderating for us. So good job, everybody. Thank you so much. All the all the silent silent voices behind the scenes deserve the respect and uh, adulation Definitely. as well, right? Yes. And my name is Eugene Tay and. Like telling you guys that no matter how you feel and what you feel, especially when it comes to the supernatural and you doubt yourself, know that you are not alone. Thank you for watching Supernatural Confessions Friday Night Live. And right now we have Bray Bray confessing on Supernatural Confessions YouTube channel. Go straight there and check him out. All right. Good night, everybody. What did you find? You are listening to Supernatural Confessions.